Hello. Um, <clears throat> today I want to talk about a movie that um, I got not that long ago. Um, one of my last uh, updates of the various uh, <clears throat> uh, films and like Blu-rays and DVDs and stuff I got. Um, when I mentioned this, when I noticed in the comments that pretty much everybody who commented mentioned this movie and um and i've wanted to talk about it a bit too since uh not only did i since i uh got it but have talked about it and that is of course donnie darko um this is from arrow home video which is the first arrow uh, uh film i've ever gotten and um, i think this is a really great uh uh like set um comes with both the theatrical and the director's cut um now i've seen the uh, uh i had seen this film before and um and also last time when i talked about it, there's the reverse uh cover uh which is basically the original uh poster because otherwise it's just this and that's not bad, but I think, you know, with the option that uh, Arrow uh, has for these, like, their Blu-rays and such, you know, reverse covers, I thought, why not just have the original? And uh, especially since I have this, which also comes with a cool book. Um, and this film, of course, you know, stars Jake Gyllenhaal, Jenna Malone, uh, Drew Barrymore, Mary McConnell. Catherine Ross, Patrick Swayze, Noah Wiley, and, uh, you know, it's about, uh, you know, Donnie Darko, played by Jake Gyllenhaal, and, um, uh, this guy named Frank, who's a bunny, and, uh, is talking to him throughout the film, telling him stuff about how the world will end, and it was just here, actually says here on the back uh 28 days uh, six hours 42 minutes and 12 seconds uh and well uh, uh when he finds this out um you know he sleepwalks he, that's a that's something we see at the beginning of the film he's sleeping on the road he gets up and rides his bike home and uh from there he uh you know we just see his overall day-to-day -day life throughout these 28 days and how at the beginning of it uh, beginning october 2nd he uh basically cheats death because a plane engine falls through the roof of his house uh family's house into his room and uh because he was not there he didn't die and uh throughout uh the film uh, he gets very interested in things like time travel and uh there's a, a, a character a old woman uh who they call grandma death who wrote a book and um Here is uh, Grandma Death, uh, uh, Roberta Sparrow, who checks the mail basically every day, as, as well as like just standing on the middle of the road, checks the mailbox, and there's nothing there. And uh, Donnie reads her book, and he's very enthused and interested in it, and uh, a lot of what is... Uh, written in the book he seems to be you know seeing and getting and frank is there and sort of guiding him for this and that and uh, uh this is a really cool uh film it's very interesting i'm sure if people who haven't seen it you know i don't want to spoil really anything um though the whole jet engine thing uh, aspect of it was uh, initially a big uh, 
a big thing. And the promotion, this film came out in 2001, in October of 2001, and of course, uh, anything with, um, at that point, with a jet engine, anything with a plane, and crashing, at that time was not a very good thing, and people were not interested, really, in films or something of the sort with that uh, aspect of it and so because of that they had to pull a lot of the advertising because that was kind of a big thing it's kind of gets you intri it intrigued and stuff so without that and a lot of uh, the whole uh, sort of like at the last minute when the movie came out the film bombed you know uh, it became a cult following uh, obviously because now people really appreciate it and enjoy it and it is a very good film it's unfortunate that with the uh, advertising uh, had a quite a bit of emphasis on that just uh, to, to the degree that when they pulled it they couldn't really I guess scramble to promote the film in a better way without it so the movie could have been pretty decent in, in the terms of uh, box office, you know, and also a lot of people were fairly confused with the film, you know, with some of the stuff going on with time travel and other things with the visions that uh, uh, Donny has with uh, uh, Frank and seeing a therapist and telling his therapist all this stuff and later the therapist relays this to his uh, parents, some of the things uh, which she believes to be the case with him. Um, you know, it's a very good film. You know, I, there's a lot of people who have discussed this movie in depth. You know, uh, there's so much that I that has probably already been said that, you know, me saying anything, um, I don't know if I'd be able to really do much justice, but I will say that I saw this on TV many, many, many years ago. I enjoyed it. I thought it was very, very unique and interesting and uh, pretty original, especially for the time. And oh, also, uh, Maggie Joan Hall was in it. I don't believe she was mentioned on the cover. Nope. Ah, yeah. But yeah, the Joan Hall siblings are in this film um, but yeah uh, this is a very good film uh, uh, if you have never seen the director's cut of this film um, and you have uh, have the fact the theatrical cut I'll just say that the you know the director's cut is a uh, the theatrical cut with all the deleted scenes so it's all the deleted scenes are like 20 minutes in total so just putting 20 minutes back into the film um and i've i've heard people uh look at this and think you know putting all the deleted scenes in some aspects wasn't all that good in the sense like you know some stuff didn't need to be there some things were kind of important and but you know, like I think the whole, I, I guess spoiler for part of it, but for the deleted scene as well as in the director's cut for the extension with the him and his therapist, you know how she tells him that the medicine he's taking is uh, like a placebo, and you know basically he's not crazy, and she doesn't really think he's crazy, but you know he, he's had some like issues that have gotten to the point where he has to see a therapist as well as um you know the uh, have medication and so with that knowledge um you know either by seeing the deleted scene or the director's cut when you rewatch the film you realize how all of this stuff is going on uh, you know he isn't crazy you know he's not insane or a wacko or whatever you know would be used to describe him uh 
This film also up. It takes place in 1988. Um, I didn't mention that earlier, but you know, it is a uh, it is definitely a period piece, uh, and it's just really cool how when rewatching it, especially with that kind of uh, context, you know, there. How you're able to really just sort of look at the movie uh, in, uh, a little differently and not in a bad way. Kind of like uh, with that context, you're able to look at everything and see how what he's going through and what's in his mind isn't really out there. It's not the... It isn't so weird or odd that so might uh make it out to be perhaps uh on the surface uh of sorts and um yeah this is a movie that you know the more you watch it the more i think it gets better um i think it's good when films get better the more you watch it as opposed to you watch it a movie once if you like it you know it's really good and perhaps you buy it on DVD or Blu-ray or in this case uh, or 4k Blu-ray and uh, you watch it again and then it's not as good and perhaps you keep watching it because you remember how good it was uh, the first time you saw it but then for whatever reason it's just not as good anymore and, and perhaps for some movies they get they get worse the more you see it which I think that really sucks uh but this is not one of those movies. This is a really good film. Um, it's a excellent cult film, cult classic, whatever you want to uh, describe it. Uh, and this is a film that uh, unfortunately had some bad timing with its release. You know, uh, with their promotion also and real life events that happened, and and also there's a whole there's an aspect of the film that apparently was controversial that apparently the, uh, the studio like distributing the film and uh, I believe even perhaps even beforehand like the, before the production of it or got, uh, got up and going they wanted the whole aspect of you know him uh, uh, Donnie with a gun he gets a gun from his you know his uh, father has a gun in his closet he gets it and then later on we see uh you know him using it and uh it was basically said how uh, you know columbine wasn't that uh, long ago and basically you know, if a teenager has a gun that's just not going to be good and uh, like if he uses it especially, it's like they want to have different reasons as to why, you know, he would have the gun and use it. Like, well, how about we change this character so he's like a serial killer. That way when, you know, if Donnie were to, you know, kill him or use a gun on him, you know, it's more justified. Or you could do something else uh, with him as opposed to just up in using a gun but you know the director Richard Kelly was like yeah, no this is how it is this is how it's supposed to be in the not only in the script but in the film itself and this is how it's going to be and it's in the film and uh, I think it's better for it uh, be kind of weird to sort of have that uh, uh, moment where because there's like these like portals as we as we see in the film that kind of have it to where like I guess sort of like time travel of sorts as well as guide you somewhere like you gotta go from one place to another and in this case you know he was out in the like in the living room he goes and up to his parents bedroom and gets the gun or finds the gun and takes it uh, and 
it's really, uh, you know, and we do see a call back a little later at one of the therapist sessions, you know, saying how uh, Frank told me that this, and as well as uh, about this book and, and all this stuff going on and all this, and he's able to, goes up to his, uh, like this portal and stuff, and how he found, he went up to his parents' uh, room, and they said, oh, what did you find? He goes, nothing, because, you know, he doesn't want to tell his therapist, oh, found his father's gun, because that's probably not going to go well. Uh, you know, with you know, at that point, whatever is going on with him, you know, uh, having to obviously go to therapy, you know, found a gun and you know my dad's gun, and so you know that's just not gonna be good. Um, people uh, who have seen Independence Day will know who Frank is, because you know you see somebody who's in the we see what he looks like uh, uh, with, the, with the mask off, with the bunny suit, and um, he played uh, Randy Quaid's, or yeah, uh, <coughs> uh, uh, his uh, son. Um, <coughs> Oh, come on, I saw the name. Whoever was it in here? Yeah, this uh, has like the cast and crew. Uh, James Duvall, yeah, he played uh, Frank in the film. He was in uh, Independence Day uh, as uh, Frank's. Uh, or Frank's uh, uh, Randy Quaid's uh, uh, son. Is it Randy? Yeah. Uh, and of course, you know, um, there's that box. And uh, I know I showed this before with my. Uh, Sort of like, I guess, show and tell of all the movies and stuff that I had gotten over the last so many months. But, uh, a poster Grandma Death and her mailbox, looking to see if there's anything. Cover this uh, from the poster. I'm sure if you have the Arrow release of this, like this, uh, you already know that. But yeah, like a hundred-page book, and uh, there's a foreword by Jake Gyllenhaal. There's like a. Essay and uh, asking a, like a Q and A with the director. Frank the Bunny. Uh, I know this uh, isn't really. A Overall, me going overtly in depth with the film again, but you know, sometimes it's kind of nice to just be able to look back at a movie that I haven't seen in a while and then just sort of talk about it generally. And uh, yeah, here's some uh, Arrow stuff for a little promotion, as well as uh, this set. Cool uh, uh, pictures from like stills of the film. Uh, see uh, the Evil Dead, which uh, uh, correctly rem remembering correctly, um, 
It was also part of a double feature with uh, The Last Temptation of Christ, which is quite interesting. Uh, you know, the film, well, the whole film takes place like in October, so Halloween time, but it's interesting to have a double feature of The Evil Dead and then The Last Temptation of Christ. Kind of like a conflicting thing of like, you know, evil and demons and stuff, and Jesus, you know, like good and evil. A double feature with evil first and then like the good later. So there's that and then uh, Frank the Bunny. Oh no. Drew Barrymore as the teacher, uh, as the English teacher. Um, who was an executive producer on the film and was part of the reason the film was able to really uh, pick up like uh, the momentum for the film to come out. There's Donnie with an axe. Because, you know, sometimes you just need to have an axe and use it. There's Miss Farmer and... Uh, and sparkle motion with uh, Donnie's sisters there. Uh, Samantha. Maggie Jill Hall plays uh, sister uh, Elizabeth. There he is, uh, carrying Gretchen. Yep, and that's it. Okay, I wanted to make sure. Um, I thought it was, but... Yeah. And all these have the exact same picture on the back, so there's nothing to all that unique. So, yeah. Which is just the poster, so that's kind of something. And, uh, yeah. The Italian uh, film. Uh, Spaghetti Western, I uh, presume. Tempo de Massacaro. Probably butchered that because uh, I can't speak Italian. And uh, no doubt anybody who can will know right off the bat that was probably a very poor pronunciation of, uh, of that title. There you go. Uh, well, my, my fingers are in the way. Here you go. Yeah, that looks really good. <clears throat> okay, well... I guess that's uh, really all I have to show with this set. Uh, I guess the discs, theatrical cut, director's cut. Hundred thirteen minutes and uh, hundred thirty three minutes. So um, yeah, this movie. Uh, Aside from originally, uh, you know, Jason Schwarzman going to play uh, Donnie Darko, who would have been, uh, who's a very good actor. I'm glad Jake Gyllenhaal played him, but you know he had scheduling conflicts, and and I wonder how that film, how the film would have been if uh, Jason uh, Schwarzman played uh, Donnie instead. But you know, I don't know. Uh, he's a very good actor. Um, I think Jake Gyllenhaal was the right person to play Donnie. That's me. Uh, there could be somebody out there who would think that, no, Jason Schwarzman should have been uh, uh, Donnie all along. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. Also, um... Christopher Nolan had a hand in getting this film uh, released uh, through uh, New Market, uh, distributing the film. Because, um, uh, you know, that that company distributed um, Memento. And, uh, might have had a hand in his first film. Uh, following also but now that I'm saying that I could be wrong but I don't want to say one way or another but 
I guess that's neither here nor there. But uh, he saw a screening of the film because they had it at film festivals. And um, he, uh, Christopher Nolan and his wife, Thomas, saw it and were very instrumental in helping uh, the distributors uh, get this film. So in a way, uh, Christopher Nolan helped this movie even back before people really knew who Christopher Nolan is, uh, was or is. And, well, we all know who he is now. You know, he made the Dark Knight trilogy and Inception and um, Dunkirk, Tenet, and uh, Interstellar. And he'll uh, have uh, Oppenheimer coming out this year. So, uh, yeah, it's cool to find out stuff like that, how... Uh, uh, Nolan, who was still a fairly uh, rising director himself, had a hand in helping a first-time director get their film distributed. So that's really cool. And uh, yeah, I just I just really enjoy this film. I like it uh, quite a bit. I know some friends of mine who love this film so much; it's their favorite film. And I can definitely see that, you know, it's a science fiction, psycholo psychological uh, thriller. Um, it's a, it's a, just a fantastic film. I, uh, really, uh, I really love this film. I think this is also a great set. And, um, and if you're able to get this set, I think it's, uh, worth getting um they do have it on like a blu-ray also just normal blu-ray i i'm pretty sure no that might be raging lock no doubt but you know 4k blu-rays are region free which is good and um i think all dvds and blu-rays should all be region free but that's just me, but what do I know? So yeah, that's all I have to really say about Donnie Darko. I really enjoy it, and I thought it'd be kind of cool to, from some of the stuff, from the behind the scenes, uh, like documentaries, making of stuff that I've watched here, as well as some other stuff I found online. It'd be kind of cool to throw in here, uh, just uh, uh, throughout the this video. It's very good, a uh, very good film. If you haven't seen it, I think it's worth watching at least once just to see what it's like. It is different, so <clears throat> be aware, especially if one isn't the biggest science fiction fan. Uh, so yeah, uh, good film, unique film. Uh, cult following. It's very, uh, it's, it's, it, I think it's very, uh, very warranted, very deserved. It's not one of those films that's got a cult following and it's out of nowhere. You know, this is a film I think had a potential to be uh, pretty good in some ways, at least initially, uh, when initially released. It's just the timing of it just, uh, wasn't on its side, so, you know, I, uh, yeah, there's, there's a lot, like, I kind of wanted to say, but at the same time, it's like uh, having to rewatch this film, uh, again, and seeing both cuts, it's just like, you know, you know it's like, there's so much you'd want to say, but it's like, uh, I don't know if I'd be able to really say it all properly anyway, but, uh, and also I didn't want to completely spoil the film for people, but, uh, yeah, it's a really good film, uh, recommend it just to at least once, see once if you haven't, but, uh, yeah, if you have seen it already, uh, what do you think? Do you enjoy it? Do you dislike it? Why, why not? You can, uh, say why in the uh, comments or what have you um, 
Yeah. So that's all I have to say. Hope all of you are doing well. Hope you're all having a great day, great weekend, and we'll have a great week. And had a great week. And I'll see you all next time. Bye.